Hi, I'm Danny Peterson with Coin6 News. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go out to different camps in Portland, different homeless camps, and see if I can talk to some of those community members and just get life from their point of view a little bit. When I report on this, I'm not going to disclose the exact cross streets of any camp that I visit for their safety. I am a human first, I'm a reporter second. These are the items that I'm taking with me to each camp. You can see there's water bottles there. We also have masks and socks. Some people may accept these items, but decline to do an interview, and that's totally fine too. I'm gonna limit the items to one per person, one pair of sock per person, one bottle of water, one face mask, so that there's enough to go around as I travel to the different camps. When it comes to the homeless, there's the uh, so much um, uh, food and clothing, it's a great abundance, right? But the main problem, and it's always been the main problem, a safe shelter for a person to lay down and, re and rest and know that they're safe and their stuff is safe because there's so much stuff problem. Yeah. People. Yeah. Well, I'm here in Southeast Portland once again. I did go to another homeless camp. Um, there was quite a few tents over there, about a half dozen to a dozen or so. I'm not gonna say the exact cross street of where I was at. I talked to one gentleman who did agree to speak to me. There was a little bit of a language barrier. He was from Laos originally, and I didn't quite understand a lot of what he said, but from what I understand, he came from Laos in 1980 when there was some kind of uh, revolution happening or unrest, I wasn't sure, and now he lives here and he's homeless on the streets. I couldn't quite understand how many years he had been on the street. He said he collects cans to get by. I'm here at yet another homeless camp, this one in southwest Portland. There didn't appear to be anyone home. It looks like there's lots of tarps built up there, uh, kind of creating a, a barrier or a wall. What is it like uh, living on the street? How long have you lived on the street? It's pretty cush for me, but it's not always that way. Uh, I'm a lot healthier because I breathe a lot more fresh air, but I'm also not a lot healthier because I breathe a lot of auto exhaust. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do to get by at each day? Um, I get so scary and uh, very resourceful. You make a lot of friends. It's really cool when people share something their mom made them around the holidays or uh, fresh cookies. All the cannabis treats are phenomenal. Uh, and making sure that people aren't too inebriated uh, is important. I try to always have something clever on my signs. And I like to change it up a lot. Uh, this is fresh today. Then it kind of goes well with tribal water rights. There's a lot of different uh, beliefs, but we all believe in the greater God, and uh, that's probably the most important part. This is a very faith-based community. Whether you want to call him Jehovah or Allah or Father of Jesus, it doesn't matter. God's God, and uh, it, it keeps our sanity here. How about how many people you have living here? Uh, we have to stay 15 apart. Uh, I have a single camp, he has a single camp, and a girl that he used to camp with has a single camp. She's the next one that way. We get a lot of uh, donations of food, so at the bottom of that is canned goods. That thing, oh uh, yeah, that's full of uh, cold water.
I do live here. Um, I moved in just a few days ago because I can't afford the rents. I um, am on unemployment and nothing is affordable anymore. And I finally beat myself down to where I was paying $95 a day for a place that was should be called Heroin Hotel. And it was terrible. And I met a really nice person that was really gung-ho and invited me here to stay and get my head cleared up. And it's been nothing but like a community or almost a neighborhood. There is only eight camps allowed and we have to keep up. There can't be syringes. There can't be bullshit everywhere. It's got to be cleaned up and everyone lives like neighbors. We all pulled our money together to put that together. So it's really a community. It's, it's, uh, it's quite nice. This is not something I want to do for the rest of my life. But there are others that have been here three years and longer that just love this life. You know, people see homeless people and think we're all bums and drug addicts. It's not what it is. There are families all over the place that can't afford to live anywhere. They're, they're one check away from being homeless. I think the city's laid off a lot on doing sweeps. There's certain rules. You can't have any dirty syringes. You can't have anyone having feces on the grounds and you can't have any violence. And that doesn't happen here. When they come and do a check, there's, I mean, you look around yourself. Does this look like a drug den to you? <laughs> there's a dog sleeping over there. I have my cat here. It's just a place we all can come to and know that we're safe. Because we can't afford housing. We just can't afford it. We may see temperatures warmer than any June day ever felt and then possibly any temperature ever felt in Portland. So that's three records right there with the span of triple digit days starting on Saturday through Monday. Now again, the warmest day. It's going to be dangerously hot. Uh, a lot of cold water and wring out rags and you know, bird bath. <laughs> yeah. uh, hard to get to a shower, too. I'm pretty acclimated. Uh, I used to live in one of the hottest spots in the nation, uh, Bullet City, Arizona, Laughlin, Nevada. Uh, I didn't think that I could take the heat as good as I have been lately, but I changed my schedule up so that I sleep like two four hour periods or a three, two three hour periods in the Try to get as much done physically early. That's why we're all getting canopies. Oh, okay. Because it keeps it really, really uh, almost cold in there. But it's keeping me on a good sleep schedule. The sun shines in my face at 7 a.m. It's about four days of, of, of cooling centers that are going to be open. We may add more sites um, as needed. That's for everyone, though. That's So folks who are unsheltered can go to those places. Folks who are in a, in a warm apartment that windows don't open and you need a place to be during the day, you can go there, too. Separately, just for folks who are without shelter, beyond, beyond sort of those cooling center options, you know, people can get a ride to those cooling centers through two-on-one. And um, that, that's a possibility, too. And uh, we're going to have outreach teams who are mobilized, right? So the, we have, we, we've been buying extra water bottles, cooling towels, uh, misting bottles, electrolyte packets, Gatorade packets, essentially, um, and things like that, that we can make into kits. And we've been doing that for the last week and a half, knowing that we were going to get to some rough weather. We didn't know it was going to be this bad, but we knew it was going to be bad enough. So we started that work a while ago.